Good evening. Ah, hang on. I guess that'll do. Welcome to the Sunday Scaries. Currently, it is a bit brighter out than I'm used to for this hour, but that's life. Uh, my name is John, uh, stream name Johnny One Take, and I am here playing Killer Frequency, which you should be seeing on the screen in just a moment. I'm not sure why we haven't yet. Hello. Why are we getting nothing? Maybe when it loads the game. We'll see. I'll give it a try. Uh, hmm. Hang on. Yeah, killer frequency is the one to grab. Where's the window for it? we not see him this is very strange if we load the game do we see it we can hear it though right So I'm definitely, I'm seeing it on my end, but I'm not seeing it in, ah, now I'm seeing it in the stream. Hello, here we go. Thank you for your patience. I think we're all set to go now. Now we're gonna try and call back Virginia Sullivan and see if she can help. Let me get my information up in the other screen though. Brilliant, okay. And now we resume with part three and hopefully the conclusion of Killer Frequency. Let's see if we can stop that killer. Redman Plunker here. Oh, hang on. Sorry, one second. Who's this? Is it you? Goose. Plunker, hey, it's the Radio Man, Horace Nash. Radio Man? What's up? Oh, did I not save it? Oh, Solving mysteries, saving lives. The huge. Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? She asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. So we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> well, that's from last uh, time. Okay, that's big on. of you, Plunker. No, <laughs> it's nothing. Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, radio man. I'll just go get her. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm... Glad you're still okay. Oh, Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. I mean, who can imagine why? I can't blame you. I'd be jumpy too. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I thought I was. I thought. Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. Clive Barker, Clive Cussler, Clive name. Anderson. What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified for us. No, the petrified Clive's force the is somewhere janitor else. Yeah. at our station. And we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. No. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. We thought so too, but... You don't understand. All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... All right. One 
day. I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man Clive, he just burst in and he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but... Why? Well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. <laughs> For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said. And that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. Yikes. I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand. She needed me. We understand. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. Any more calls? Or do we go back so, to the music? So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? Why indeed? Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Do you want to call her? I do. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, we need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Aha, Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who jazz is this? Jazz Jazz. Hello I love again, it. Sandra. It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. It's amazing how, how the phone jazzy. works both ways. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Kinky. Do you know why the whistling man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I can tell, he was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. Mm -hmm. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... Oh, wait a minute. I don't know what Hang you on. mean. I just messed some stuff up. Gotta rewind, folks. Sorry about that. I thought I was on a different call. Sorry, we gotta do this part again. Fremant Plunker here? Who's this? Is it you? Goose? Plunker, hey, it's the Radio Man, Forrest Nash. Radio Man? What's up? Solving mysteries, saving lives. The huge. Right, 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 right on. Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? Heard. So we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's big of you, Plunker. No, <laughs> it's nothing. Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, Radio Man. <gasps> I'll just go get her. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, this... it's Forrest. I'm. Oh, 
Glad you're still okay. Oh! Forrest! Sorry, I'm still jumpy. I can't blame you. I'd be jumpy too. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I thought I was. I thought... Just a second, make sure something here. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. I don't know that name. What are you asking about this for? That didn't sound forced or anything. You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. We thought so too, but... You don't understand. All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if oh, he kept them or made copies um, or uh, what, but a minute ago. we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... All right. One day, I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in and he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand. She needed me. We understand. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. Atrocious. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? Why indeed? Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Do you want to call her? I do. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, we need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. I'm gonna save it here. Aha, Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra. It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The, the Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, 
We're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Really? Well, that sounds nice. I might just call you back tomorrow then, too. Ah, uh, you've got my number. Mm -hmm. But what about tonight? Is there anything you want to talk about right now? Remember why we called, Forrest. Yeah. Of course. Do you know why the Whistling Man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I can tell, he was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything dun, dun, about dun. that. Sorry. Hmm. Have you had to keep quiet about anything? Any secrets you've had to keep? What would I have to keep quiet about? I don't know. I mean, could be that you've seen something or heard something. I never saw anything. You said you see something. Even say if I something. did, what would that matter? And, and it was years ago. Sandra, are you okay? It was years ago. We know, Sandra. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. This studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. Do you understand? Sure. I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd mm -hmm. stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. Of course. We understand. I mean, it's not like I killed him. What was the harm in saying I found him in the reservoir instead of the river? Right? Right? I'm sorry. I can't do this. Okay, saving that now. Now that we've done that conversation She's correctly. gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. Yeah. You truly did great, Forrest. Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Forrest. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight. But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. No, I don't wanna. Oh, come on! It's his birthday. I won't have a chance to do it again until next year. May as well, Forrest. Uh, fine. What's his name? Thank you, Forrest. He's my Can't uncle me. Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never likes it. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God, damn it! Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza. Start again, you. You son of a bitch! Stop calling us. Yeah. Damn it, Peggy. This is your fault. My fault. I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. <sighs> Don't worry. We've already got another caller on the line. Just pick it up, okay? Hop, hop. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, up. This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> caller. Well. Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> Peggy should really be screening these Forrest? calls. Forrest? Forrest? Are you okay? <sighs> Forrest? I hope. The whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest. Sorry, sorry, that was, that was too much. 
It's okay. It's been a high stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call, whenever you're ready. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Ah, I bet I know why you're calling. I'm sorry I didn't play your song. There's a lot going on. But please? Uh, never mind that now. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next, after Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. So I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Can a neighbor let you in? Oh, I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here, only the, the keypad for the entry code. Alarm bells are ringing. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you Call live your in? landlord. Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the New Woodside apartment building between the town hall and the trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. Order delivery form. Starling must have left this by accident. The system's not even installed at Woodside. Let's point out the things we heard there. We heard a train and we heard a goat. The sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. And a dog. Sounds like a noisy part of town. It is. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any. Hey, let's check where Woodside Apartments is. Hang on. He's coming down the street. Oh, shoot. I don't think he's seen me yet. Forrest, breathe. I need your help. I need the code for that security system, or I'm gonna die. Let's see, where's Woodside Apartments? Right there. Near a trailer park and a bunch of residential streets. Not super noisy. However, if we look around, what is near things that sound like that? There's a train track right over there, I think. And the Woodside Apartments is not near a train track. Hmm. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says... Starling Security 4000, there's a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six-digit number. Hey, here's a detail, huh? Here's a delivery note for Starling, for Starling Security, rather. Uh, and there was one delivered to Woodside Apartments, but it was unable to install. Requires new parts, new installation date later on. So that's not where she is. She's got to be either at Christine's Gas and Repair, Roller Ricky's Roller Rink, or St. Gabriel's Hospital. And we know Roller Ricky was talking about this earlier, so. Yeah, let's just give it to that for now. Grab this. Starling Security 4000, huh? Starling 4000, user manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. That's right, very newly installed. I need the key code before the whistling man gets me. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew 
I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Dawn into her apartment. Did I play Dawn's song? Because she'll definitely be listening now. Was it that one? Or was it the other one? I can't remember. Hang on. Coming up for your listening pleasure, it's Caged Tiger with their single, One Last Goodbye. Mm -hmm. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me, or was there something... It wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah. Well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000, or whatever, here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone. One nine one. Five, okay, nine. so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling Four Thousand. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky! I... Do you think we should give him a call? Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but... Yeah, call. That might be a good idea. Okay, one moment. I got the number here. Patching you through. Shit. He probably can't hear it over the music. Forrest, I don't know about this. This is super weird. Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Yeah, they're hinting at it Okay, well. if you say so. When you're ready, shut the music off. When you're ready, shut the music off. Gonna do it. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. What's playing on? Oh, thank God you're back. I was so afraid. What's the code to What's the key? What's the music? The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. Son of a bitch. Ah! Cry of fear. Is she? Tell him, Ricky. Don't ever come back here again! Oh, I'm calling the cops! There ain't oh. no cops. Thank God. Hello? Is someone there? Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him! That was the whistling man. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folk, but 
I can't let anything happen to Maxi. He's my best it. friend, you know? I... Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. I'm gonna barricade that window. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free whenever you want. Oh, hell forever. yeah. That's a done deal. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. Okay. Gallows Creek. Hey, and watch the video. Oh, and Ricky survived the rest of the night. Listen. Just happened. So the hey, whistling man Play all records is a woman? I had my suspicions. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. Or did That's she? That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might you wondering what to make of it all here's our take we now believe the killer is actually a woman one who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you we're neighbors look out for each other and stay safe the killer was calling themselves Don this could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. Yeah. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Oh, great. Okay, folks, time to take a call. Click. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The, the Scream. Hey, ma'am. Murphy? Damn straight. What's going on, Murphy? You in danger again? No, nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. And since you asked folks to call in if they could help out, well, I'm calling. I don't know if I can say as much as other folks have, but uh, I figure I wouldn't be a good role model to Fernando if I didn't try to help, you know? We really appreciate that. A hundred percent. He Thank you, Murphy. Appreciate that. Oh, thanks. So, uh, what do you want to know? Well, what can you tell us? Uh, I don't know, really. All right. Well, do you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely nothing. Never heard okay. of that before. What about the killer herself? Mm -hmm. Herself? <laughs> Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. No, it was like six guys, right? The man I went toe-to-toe with -to -toe was a man, man. You heard the last call, right, Murphy? Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. I, I know, but... Man, how could it have been a woman under that mask? Pretty Let's easily. just move on. Do you know anything about the history of the Whistling Man? No, sir. Tonight's the first time I ever heard of him. What? I moved here three years ago, man. What do you want from me? Yeah, but they do the big... Da, 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 da. Hey, man, no worries. Just thank you for trying. Right. Sorry I couldn't help you all more, man. Now, if you'd have asked me about gators... Forrest, we have a call coming in. Sorry, Murphy. I think that's all we've got time for right now. Mine too. Uh, uh, all right, all right. I'll catch you all with the gator talk later. Not. Well, folks, that was a bust. But perhaps our next caller has more they can tell us. Let's find out. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. Mm -hmm. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Is he still breathing? He, yeah, but, but he's bleeding out fast. I really need help. 
Take a breath. We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place, and we heard this whistling all of a sudden. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh, no. Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. Mm. It sounded like he might have known the person. Oh, dear. And they just stabbed him. Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a mask and wore all black. That's all I know. Mm. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. What's your friend's name, Casey? Jason! Jason Parker! Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach. Ooh, that's a kill shot. And then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground. That's and potentially it... also a kill shot. Oh, the knife is still there in his leg! Jesus. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, but please, we need something or he's going to die. Get him in the I... car get him there. Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. Oh, grand. You think you can handle that? All right. Uh, yeah, we don't really have a choice. We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. Oh, jeez. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. All right, uh, don't replace bandages, elevate his legs, keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. I mean, treat him for shock. That's is as really much as I can give you right now. Yeah, don't take Try to stop the bleeding. Object Find out. someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. Hello? Hello? Forrest, are you there? Let's save it just in case. I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly. He's still bleeding. I need help. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? No, don't. 
No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? <laughs> I hate looking at that knife. Y yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer. Well, what's going to be the most sterile? The laundry. Look in the laundry for something like a towel or a shirt. Hold that over the wound. Okay. Looks like I'm going to have to buy you some new whites, Jason. Here we go. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Casey. I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. This is tense, man. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Any suggestions, Peggy? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a... Producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah? Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. All right, here it's we go. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Go on. Go on. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. What? I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Oh. Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer, and they do something. They're like cassettes, only Peggy. better. I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. I'll just have to look around. Actually, let's... Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office, so you'll hear me over the intercom. Dead air? Aha! Achievement unlocked. Master of unlocking. Looks like I need a four-digit wow. code. Hey, 
Science, very important date. Eraser from below a can coming to video soon, August 29th. Holiday 1982. Oh, another map. But what's this say? Certificate is to certify blah blah blah. First aid to the injured. August 13th. That doesn't seem like the right date. You can't read the other ones. on the desk. Alien sightings, number five, number 75, UFO over park. October 18th, it's not the one. Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my post-it notes. Ask Jenny where those copies are, it's been two weeks now, they're overdue. about the he said she said something something not what we're looking for hang on acts forever need to write pitch document good title bring back a name pro tag and villain hmm. wonder where we find that important date because i'm not seeing a thing anywhere Peggy, you there? there we yeah, go. I'm here. Did you find what we need? I can't figure out how to get into this stupid safe. No worries. We still have a little time. Reggie writes almost everything down somewhere. I'd recommend you start reading. I'll have a look around. You're probably right. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. Well, we got a floppy disk. It looks like a three and a half. I was hoping for five and a quarter, but three and a half is still good. Nothing in that drawer. Nothing in that drawer. It was two empty drawers in a desk and one floppy disk in the other. That's weird. That's real weird. Man doesn't even have a calendar. dates, but I don't see the one that it's supposed to be. Oh, all the same. Okay. Could this be it? Ah, here we go. Deep cuts. Pizza buffet killer who kills with a pizza cutter. Free slice on me. Terrifyingly, there is never any pizza. What happened to the original delivery guy? If you write him in as the final girl's boyfriend, the protagonist is a college student named Megan, she then follow, uh, etc. Takes place on November the 7th, a very important date for the town, the Great Goose Gathering, an event where a large number of geese appear suddenly and save the town from starvation. I'm trying to make this into a little larger story. Okay. Well, a very important date, huh? That's our answer. Might have been July 11th, I guess, but either way. Personnel file from John Hedges. Personnel file for Karen Lawson. Hang on a second. Start with John or with John Hedges. Let's see. Oh, but I have to. Uh, hang on. Right, 
Let's see what John Hedges says. Hey, I just knocked at the door. Anyway, newsreader blah, 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 refused to engage the first aid trainer during the course, said he was a war medic, but the station possible. Well, he's a war medic. Medical equipment in his home, they procure from the military. This is our guy. All right, cool. Well, there's our answer. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please pick up. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What oh, the... Actually, hang on. Let's save the game. I haven't done that in a while. I do. Okay, hang on. He's going God, into shock. It sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the bleeding seems to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate the feet. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep him warm, so... I'll use my jacket. I can always get a new one. I'll fix his bandage and get him warm. Hold on, please. Oh. strong for Jason. Casey, I need you to be strong for Jason. Sit with him and reassure him that everything's going to be okay. Okay? Okay. But please, I, I can't give him what he needs. Please sit down. I can't lose him. All right, Forrest, we need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier. Who was it? We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. He's a war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or never mind. He's lost a lot of blood and he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is going to die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I, I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. 
damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak, and then just started thrashing. What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. The show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Okay, we go now. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. Okay. So we go. game. Let's check some things before we continue. Hang on. Time for some music. Yeah. Let's go ahead and throw this on. Intro the track, please. You're gonna love this next track. It's getting pretty late. Hang on. Checking something now. A lot, a lot has yet to go on. Let's this see might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through, too. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. Yeet. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Flores, it's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, oh and Maxie's oh. here too. Yay, Maxie. Good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Oh, we're good, man. Thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. That wouldn't be a bad look for you, Forrest. A little white wing halo number. Maybe something for the KFAM Halloween party. Yeah, that'd be the All day. right, everyone, let's calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxie. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Did you see or hear anything during the attack earlier? Not exactly. Mm -hmm. See, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. Oh. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallows High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team, too. Really? Keep talking. What happened? We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, 
Were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Ricky, listen, this is very important. I need to know everything about her. I didn't really know her before, or see her after that. I never even got her name, man. I just remember he called her Bean. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. What Bean? I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were just having a good time. Hey -oh. And then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up and saw that goddamn whistling man in the trees. And I never ran so fast in my life. Huh? I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but... Uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. Why? Ricky, it wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I know that now, ma'am. It took a long time to learn, but... Yeah, just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, ma'am. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Maxie to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. I'll let you to it. Oh! Night, Ricky. Good night, Maxie. All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late 30s now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in, but hang on. What's up, Peggy? What is up, Peggy? Peggy? You're gonna want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Ah, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Hello? Forrest, I'm glad I got back through to you. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Hey! Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. I... Wait, Sara? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. <laughs> anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until now. It's been non-stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek as we speak. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines. They had no idea what was happening. That's great news. Where? That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Did they blow up a telephone pole? Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. Then. <laughs> That's where you come in. You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town. So if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in. So once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. I'll do my best. 
I know you will. Oh, jeez. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Boris Nash's interview of a lifetime. Yeah. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. I hope you're right. The sooner this is over, the better. I <laughs> am right. Trust me. Anyway, we should get you back on air. Taking callers is the only way to see this through. So you say. Okay, Forrest, shut the music up. Bringing you back live now. Yeet. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over. Mm. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. I hit the thing. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. Hey. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John, is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? Jason! Hey, Jason lives. Last. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach. Yeah. And there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> <coughs> oh. Take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I, I will. Know. But uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there. Yep. As far as we know, anyway. Well, I was worried you'd say that. God damn it. Actually, I'm glad you called. I wanted to talk to you about what happened earlier. Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he all right? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. Well. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Hey, what's that Sounds noise? like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. What are we hearing over there? I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on. Like he'd never existed. What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. We decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. Irony. The party that night I guess that party I left the group for a second. Met our whistling man. Pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Oh, this is why they were saying not so funny Started now, is it? an almighty panic. Those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead but when I heard her scream Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean is that who you mean Bean oh yeah I guess
guess George did call her that. We just yeah. called her Dawn. Man. He called her B. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was What? What? What happened? Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. Like Margaret, gone. maybe? How do we get it back on? I don't uh, Oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Reggie picked it up a while ago in case we ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. An emergency broadcast? Yeah, you're supposed to have the EAS system there, you know. Not exactly what the EAS Fair is used point. for, but sure. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Cool. Oh, see you when you're back. All right. And so we go. I don't want to go down, down, down the basement. I don't want to go. Down, down, down in the basement. I don't want to go. Down, down, down in the basement. I don't want to go. Down, down, down in the basement tonight. Down in the basement tonight. Okay, but down we go anyway. Let's see here. Far back corner. Why is this station so big? Wind our way around. That must be it. I mean, how could it be anything else, right? Oh, we've got power. Achievement unlocked. Will that be lights? Uh oh. Uh oh. That whistle sounds something. local. I need to warn Peggy. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. I'm trying to warn her. Inside Studio B here. Peggy, where did you go? Hey, what? No way. This can't be happening. Jesus Christ. Hang on a second. Let's see here. Oh, hang on. Here we go. A, a call. Where do I hit? Here. Where's Peggy gone? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. We've got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well... Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that 
out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome mm -hmm. to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. What's happening? Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well, he knows I'll get it. Yep, name began with an M. It's Margaret. She never said her last name from before. I did wonder how they were going to have the reveal that Peggy was involved. Now I see. Wait, then... Who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. What? Your son? You mean you... Wait, did, did he... Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. Oh, maybe I was And wrong. that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. I don't think I've forgotten about that, Forrest. Locking my sweet boy away like an animal. And Murphy, he, he was right, wasn't he? He did fight a man. He did. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. Hang on. Did you say... Barrel? That... Are you... Let me just get this mask on. <sighs> Damn uncomfortable thing. We no won't be needing this. this. <sighs> there we go. Marie? Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been years oh, since never mind. I, I was last totally wrong with the paper thing. Oh, God. I like my version better. Marie Campbell. So, not Don, huh? No. Not Don. What are you going to... Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You... You're gonna talk when I talk to you. Not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you a chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Interesting. Alright, so here's where the choices actually start mattering. Okay, Marie. I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Murdered? Uh, listen, I... Jesus, one of those I said you speak when you're spoken to. <sighs> now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. Interview you? All right, I can do that. Thank you. I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story, Forrest. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Teddy, be honest with me, or we're both going to die. Honest? Forrest, I'm trapped here with a psycho. <coughs> oh. Ow. What the hell? God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as Whistling Night. I'm 
guessing that's what you mean? Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just a night that Mooney went missing. Jesus. But Whistling Night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We Dang. went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God. Who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky. He was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Yeah, good for you. Because I'm a decent man. Uh, you is that know? so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. You're a fine so position to talk, pal. I helped him keep himself together. You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Yep. Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. I looked up at the trees and saw Jason there. Bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man. Screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. Did you ask Ricky? Did you ask Ricky if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Why? Because Ricky phoned up earlier. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... It doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. How just can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on! I... Oh, God damn it! You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. Yeah, it's pretty fun. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Yeah, that's why he said not so funny now. Jason's either. still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding. And got him professional help just in time. Well, don't brag about it. Oh. Have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Not really. I mean, like he does. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point, and when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing. I'm here. How did you feel in that moment? I felt like nothing was real. I felt small and confused. And... Who was under the mask, Murray? Who was, Who was the whistling, whistling man? man? It was Chuck. Chuck Brody. Laughing away. But then he stops, and he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Said it. What happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just... Teddy! George fell off Whistling Point. How do you know? How do you know what happened? I saw it. You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the whistling man too, and I didn't push him. God damn it! I just chased him up there, and he kept backing up. 
when I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar. It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. It literally is. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. Ugh. You bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. Then why the cover-up? If she's lying, then why the cover-up? My future was at stake, Ash. You know what it's like. People like us are bred for bigger things. Don't compare me to you. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, of course. And then governor. And then, who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin my future? How dare you? George was a blip? He wasn't a blip, Lori. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night, but... Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. For heaven's sake, answer the question, jackass. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes, okay. We own the most of the town. That's it, then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews, too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking just got himself into trouble and I saw I'm I'm sorry for all it's worth Virginia didn't have much of a choice she had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford she played along with the gallows to save her sister's life and her own even even still she should have told the truth I did my part I tried everything I could think of I even went to the newspaper but no, that coward killed the story. <sighs> we'll take care of Maurice Russell later. Bold of you to think you can. You've been through hell? Yeah. You've been through hell, You've been through hell Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. Never should have started. I shouldn't have pushed my George off the cliff. I should have been punished. But it's coming to a stop. Wait a sec. Yeah, where do you shoot throws? Creek High, in the gymnasium. Hey, That's friend. right, Forrest. Not that it matters, but yes, we're here. Anyway, oh. I think that took a swing for Teddy Gallows. With Teddy. So. Marie, where? Oh my God. Peggy. Teddy, you've got to help me. I. Quiet. You'll talk more later. What the heck? Now I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy. It's been so long since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. Marie! Oh my god. I thought you... And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Hey, maybe I was right. Sister? Peggy, what, what's happening? Why are you even there? Want to explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. 
She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, Aww. you found out that my sister is the whistling man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been with George. And... And... Mm -hmm. It's not your fault. Really, it's mom and dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well, I'll have to settle for the next best thing. I... Wait. Is that why you went after that kid in the maze maze? Eugene Stein? Because his parents? That's right. Eugene's parents were there that night, too got themselves killed in a bus accident. And since only their child was left... Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She, she kept it here, on her desk. How would you card? find that? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I. Well, I. Henderson Police! Freeze! Oh, no! Wow. Henry! Get out of there! Oh, well, she's gone. Peggy! We have two wounded and we're in pursuit of the suspect. Henderson Police! Freeze! Forrest! I can't get out of there. How's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. God, Marie! Hey, Zara! Hey, a team of two I sisters. Need to look Peggy Peggy. Survive. She needs help. Now. We got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over. Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben. Forrest Nash. Nash. I like it's been a scream. And it's been a scream. Yeah! Aha, I survived the whistling man. Very good. Which do I need to save all the targets? Wow, there's a lot of people.
can just barely read that, I'm sure none of y'all can read that, unfortunately. So I'm gonna back up, please. Uh-oh, uh-oh. going to happen here, they're going to jump. That's poetry. History rhymes. Move. Else has to get hurt. Being awfully gentle with this one. You don't have to take her alive. You can treat her alive. No, no, I'm not going to say anything too spicy for her. Sounded like they hit the water. Officer Luco, do you have a visual? Negative. No sign of the suspect anywhere. Yeah, it was 80s jams. All right. Oh, how's it end? That's it? I guess that's it. Okay, so we're ending it slightly earlier than usual, uh, and that's okay because we've run out of game. And I may go back and do the playthrough at some point where everybody dies, but that doesn't sound like it'd be a fun time on stream. So uh, I think this may be the last of Killer Frequency we see on Sunday Scaries. Uh, I do seriously recommend the game, though. It's a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, yeah... So, to all of you out there in Radio Land, good night out there, whatever you are.